In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use printed floor plans and elevations to scale them appropriately and then be able to draw over them. So I've just got a blank SketchUp document. I'm going to erase, erase the man here. And first thing I'm going to do is go down to Import. And I've got a directory here that's got some floor plans and elevations in it. I'm going to click on this first level plan and import it. And when you import it, you can see I'm just moving around with the pointer. If I start in the origin and then pull it, it will scale it. I'm not going to worry about the exact scale right now. And then you can kind of zoom in on this and you can see I've got dimensions on this plan. So you do want something that is dimensioned so that you can scale it properly. Um, and the way to do that is to just get the tape measure tool and click on a known dimension. I'm clicking a second time here. And then I'm going to type in 24 feet and press enter. And I'll get this box that comes up and asks me if I want to resize the entire model. And I'll say yes. And now if I do the tape measure again, if I go from this point to that point and just hover over it, it comes up as 24 1. I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to click there and then type in 24. You can do this as many times as you want. I'm not sure it gets any more accurate, but um, it's pretty darn close at this point. Depending on where I hover, I'm not really snapping to anything. So I've got this pretty close to 24 inches. Now I've also got uh, a couple of different elevations and I want to bring those in too. Now it gets a little bit trickier. So if I go and import another file, and let's say it's a front elevation. So I'm going to import that. I want to do two things. One, I want to rotate this up. So it's going to want to start on this ground plane. So I click to establish a size. And then I will go to my rotate tool. And I'll try to get an edge here. There, I want to stay on this red axis. So I click on the edge and I can, I'm actually rotating it down, but that's okay. And then I'll get my move tool and I'll move it up. So basically what we're trying to do is align this and make it the same size as the floor plan. So we know that this 24 inch dimension is the front width of the building. So even though I don't have dimensions on this elevation, I know I want to make it from this point to this point, I want to be 24 inches. And you can see it's a little undersized. So if I use the same technique here that I used, I measure the two points and then type in 24, it asks me if I want to resize the entire model. And if I say yes, if I go from here to here, it's probably going to be good. Yep, it's pretty close to 24. But if I go back to my floor plan, that also got sized up because it resized the entire model. And that's now 43 feet. So that's no good. So I'm going to undo the change and go back here and just show you that this should be somewhere around 24 feet, which it is. <clears throat> so now what I have to do is I have to make this into a group and then open the group and do my resizing inside the active group. So to show you what these things are, when you bring in a JPEG, let's go to Entity Info. Uh, it's just kind of a special object. It's a, it's a JPEG that you can move around in the model and it's kind of transparent so you can see it from either side. Um, so what I've got to do is I've got to make this into a group. So the first thing I want to do is right click on it and explode it. And now I can right click on it and make it a group. You literally have to explode the JPEG first and then group it. So now when I double click to open up the group and I get my tape measure tool, now I can successfully do the scaling. So I'm going to click on that side and click on this side. And you can see it's 13.3 about. So I'm going to click a second time and now I'll type in 24 feet. 
And now I get a different message and it says, do you want to resize the active group or component? Yes, I do. And now I should have 24 feet or approximately anyway on the elevation. And I should have an unmodified floor plan, which I do. It's about 24 feet. Okay. So now what you can do is actually align these things. So I'm going to go M for move. Actually, I've still got my group open, so I'm going to click outside of it. And I will click M for move. And I'm going to align this porch. Try to align this close to the edge of the building. And then kind of move up a little bit. So... I guess the floor plan really is referencing right about there. So I'll leave it there. And then the porch is coming out in front. So we have one more elevation to bring in. <clears throat> and that'll be very similar to the process we just did. So I'll go to File, Import. Now one thing I didn't uh, touch on is you want to have this Use as Image checked, not a texture. So you can actually use one of these images and make it a texture very much like the uh, material filling that we've been doing. So I'll leave that on image. And now I get my left elevation. Import that. And now that I have another vertical surface, I can kind of snap to that and scale that. Again, we don't really care what the scale is at this point. And... Now I kind of want to figure out what side this is going to be on, but I'll, first I'll rotate it. So I'll get my rotate tool and click here, click there a second time, and then rotate it 90 degrees. And so my porch is coming out in the front, so that looks good. So now I need to explode this and make it a group, so I'll right click, explode the JPEG, and then right click, make it a group. Double click, open it back up again, and now I can scale it. So if I refer to the floor plan, you can see that this last section here is 10 feet. So I'm going to do T for tape measure. Click here. Click right about there. And then type in 10 feet and press Enter. And I get my resize active grouper component. I'll say yes. And let's just check the dimension here. So that's right around 10 feet. Very good. So now I'm going to move this. Well, let's close the group first. And now I want to align this to my floor plan. So I'm going to move it down. And I move this section. Oops. Move this section over to right about there. Maybe move it down a little bit. So since it's pretty easy to move these things around, one thing you can do is right click on it. And I was going to try to lock it. But I don't see that there. Let's see if we can do that on one of these groups. Yeah, we can. Right click and lock. So, for some reason you can't do that on the JPEG. So we'll go through the same process here. We will explode this and then group it. And now right click on it and we should be able to lock it. So any locked object cannot be moved. The only thing you can really do to it is unlock it. So that floor plan is going to stay put. Uh, the two elevations, I want to leave those unlocked because I may want to move this out. And I may want to move this one straight out. And they're just kind of for reference as we're tracing over this image. So I'm not going to go through the whole building here, but I do want to show you how you might trace over these walls, pull them up, and reference your uh, elevations to see really what's going on in the building. So, nice thing is we have dimensions here. So, I'm going to start here in the corner. And this rectangle should be 
15, 6 by 24. So I'm going to type in 24 comma 15 foot 6, taking the dimensions right off the floor plan. And I'm going to go ahead and, well, let's do a couple more rectangles first and then we'll fix them up. So we don't really know what this dimension is here. So I'll use the tape measure tool and come in. And it's looking pretty close to 12 inches. So I'm just going to make that 12 inches. And then this back portion of the, of the um, house is 10 inches deep. So we'll start a rectangle here. And let's see if we get it pretty close and look down in the dimension box. It's like about 15, 2 by 10 feet. So let's make it that. I'll type in 15 foot 2 comma 10 feet and press enter. Uh, and there's a porch in the back, but let's just model this main section here. And so I'm going to erase this line in the middle. I will go to our offset tool and bring in our walls, type in six inches. And now I can click on that center piece and get rid of that and go to push pull and pull our walls up. Now here's where our elevation comes in handy. Uh, I want to pull that up to say the knee wall height so I can come over here and reference the elevation take my tape measure tool and go up here to the top of the knee wall it says about 12.5 let's measure that again it's about 12.6 so I'll start with a guideline on the bottom type in 12 foot 6 and push pull that down to the guideline. So I'm going to group this. And if I'm drawing over a plan like this, it's nice to be able to see the plan and not be obscured by the walls. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to materials and let's see, I'm going to go to glass and mirrors and I can get a transparency here so I'll get a gray transparency so now I can see the walls but I can also see the floor plan if I want to work on the internal walls I can do that makes it a little bit easier so um, just to show you what else you can reference on here let's see we say we wanted to make this roof uh, and to determine the roof pitch, I'm going to get my protractor tool. I'm going to start right here on the edge of the roof, come straight across on the green axis, and then come up along the roof. I can see my angle is 45, so that's most likely a 12-12 pitch. Out here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll start on the bottom part of the roof, go horizontal, click a second time, and then come up. This angle looks at about 15 degrees, so I'm going to type in 3 colon 12. That looks pretty darn close. And let's do one more. The angle of our, the pitch of our dormer roof. Start here, we'll go horizontal, and we'll come up to right about there. So that looks the same, 15 degrees. And I'll type in 3 colon 12. Our line doesn't move too much. So from our elevations, once they're scaled appropriately, we can get all sorts of information. We can measure over to see where our rough window openings are. Um, so it's nice to have these things on the screen and be able to reference them as you're modeling um, something from existing plans.